All right, here we go with our last video in Unit 4, Intermolecular Forces. This one's going to be a little bit longer than the others. Uh, sorry, but life's rough. The other ones have been kind of short. Also, this one is really crucial because it's really setting the stage for a lot of what we're going to be doing in Unit 5, the physical behavior of matter. And a lot of things behave the way they do because of the intermolecular forces. So you want to pay close attention here, and the things that you have to memorize, commit to memory, the things that you need to understand, I will help you understand in class. Okay, here we go. Short for intermolecular forces are, is IMF. So when I'm writing this on the board or whatnot, I'll just be writing IMFs. Like I said, short for intermolecular forces. And these are the weak forces that hold molecules together, right? They're not strong like ionic bonds, right? They're not intermolecular forces because they're actual chemical bonds, but they're very strong. These intermolecular forces are relatively weak, okay? Covalent bonds are strong. Intermolecular forces are weak. Covalent bonds are strong. Intermolecular forces are weak. All right, so there's three main types. Hydrogen bonding, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put that in quotes. Because hydrogen bonding is not a bond like a covalent bond. Hydrogen bonding is just an attraction. Dipole-dipole and dispersion or London dispersion forces. All right, these are the three main types. So first, let's take a look at hydrogen bonding. It is of the intermolecular forces. Remember, they're all relatively weak, but this is the strongest of them. And really, it's a special dipole-dipole force. And this occurs in molecules where hydrogen is covalently bonded, usually to fluorine, nitrogen, or oxygen. And the hydrogen, since it's a positive end, is attracted to this lone pair of electrons. So since this lone pair of electron is negative, and the hydrogen is a positive dipole, just like magnets, they're attracted to one another. Okay, so it's not strong like a covalent bond, but of intermolecular forces, it's the strongest kind. Remember, not a real bond. Okay, next is dipole, dipole bond. So here, let's look at, we have hydrogen chloride, where the hydrogen end tends to be positive, the chlorine end tends to be negative. Here's another one, the hydrogen end tends to be positive, the chlorine end tends to be negative, and they're attracted towards one another, once again, like magnets. So polar molecules are like magnets, okay? Strong, the more electronegative difference, the stronger the magnet. And that'll lead to a higher boiling point and melting point. The greater the polarity, the greater the melting point, boiling point. The less the polarity, the lower the melting point, boiling point. Okay, they're directly related to one another. Finally, dispersion forces. These are the weakest of the intermolecular forces. And these are found in nonpolar molecules. And here's why. So let's take a look at the picture down here, right? You have an iodine covalently bonded to another iodine. Right? And overall, the electrons are shared equally. But just like, let's say, two of us played a game of hot potato, at any given point in time, only one of us is more likely to have the potato. In this case, one of the iodines is more likely to have the electrons. So at any moment, the shared electrons will be closer to one atom than the other. That leads to what's called a momentary dipole. So in one moment, this iodine will have the shared electrons, making it more negative and this one more positive. At another moment, the other iodine will have the electrons, making it more negative, more positive. Okay, so it's at any moment there could be a dipole. And that's a momentary dipole. And these behave like very weak dipoles. 
So when we saw the HCL, that was a fairly strong dipole. This is a very weak dipole. Larger molecules have stronger dispersion forces. Okay, So that's why since iodine is larger than chlorine, iodine is going to be a solid at room temperature because of these stronger dispersion forces. All right, IMF wrap-up. What do we really need to know? Polar molecules have a higher boiling point and melting point than non-polar molecules because of stronger forces. The stronger the IMFs, the greater the boiling point and melting point. Larger molecules tend to have higher intermolecular forces. Therefore, larger molecules will tend to have higher boiling point and melting point. All right, question time. List the IMFs in order from strongest to weakest. What must be present in order to have a hydrogen bond? Radon has the highest boiling point of the noble gases. Why? So you're going to need to look at your periodic table to answer this one. All right, should be able to answer all of those. All right, see you guys in school.